Woo! Man, it's, it's bright outside, man. What's up, guys? It's your boy Chef from Off the Dome, back again with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about how Nicki Minaj got surpassed by Drake and how it happened so simply. I'm behind the alley, as you see, because, you know, there's trash. And there goes a wall to the family dollar. You can't see nothing in the sun, John, man. The sun is crazy. But anyway, see? And I'm in the hood, guys. But Nicki Minaj, for the first part of her career, looked like she would be the one to be the biggest pop mega star. And for the most part, she did. From, I believe, from basically late 2010 to early to mid-2014, she was Cash Money's most important commodity. Her and Drake both did do good numbers on album sales always. Drake's always been a good album seller. Singles-wise, Drake was always decent at that too, but he didn't have the pop crossover appeal that Nicki Minaj had. Nicki Minaj had hits like Super Bass, um, Moment for Life featuring Drake, Starship, Pound Alarm, Turn Me On, the feature with Justin Bieber, Beauty and the Beat, uh, Fly with Rihanna. She had a couple of pop singles up her sleeve, and she really was doing her thing in the earlier days of her career. Now, when this all started taking a turn for the worse is when, basically, when that Pink Print album came out. Truffle Butter did chart on the pop chart, so did only, but it wasn't as high. And she started getting her more of a rap core fan base back. But by then, I think it was too late. They already knew she was a starship Nicki Minaj. She was the high school Nicki Minaj. She was the one that made Pound Alarm. She was the one that made Va Va Voom. She was that Nicki Minaj, the, the publicly traded branded Nicki Minaj. What Drake had advantage was is that he always had pop crossover singles. They weren't to the level of Nicki Minaj's in the earlier days, but he did build that groundswell of crowd people that liked his R&B, that liked his hip-hop, and some people that liked his crossover radio hits. For the pop stage, she had Find Your Love, Take Care, um, and I believe Headlines. For the hip-hop crowd, he had Start From The Bottom, um, Best I Ever Had, and for the R&B people, he had um, Marvel's Room. That basically, that's how I can say. Marvel's Room, Crew Love. The Model was a huge rap single. That the hip hop fans love and the pop, the pop spirit took it with the YOLO acronym. So Drake had all three crowds of people. He had all eyes on him. Nicki Minaj kind of alienated that hip hop core fan base because a lot of people said Nicki's not as good as she was when she first came out. She's not that New York battle rapper chick anymore. She doesn't have them hard bars. She's singing on hooks. She's making hits with producers like David Guetta and Calvin Harris, etc. And she kind of alienated that crowd. The people that enjoy Queen and Pink Print. Those women are back now because they think it's the old Nicki. But it took many years of beefing with Remy Ma, Lil' Kim, and Cardi B so they can go back to this hard Nicki Minaj flow, the style, the um, remixes, etc. It took all that to make that, like, happen. And it, it maybe it was a little too late, you know. It, that, that era of Nicki Minaj, that battle rap Nicki Minaj, that one that... Makes you think about crossing her because she's going to give you a fire ass freestyle off the bat. And Nicki Minaj came back in the last couple of years, 2015, 16. But for those first four years of her career, 2010 to about 2014, she went popping kind of alienated that had the bubblegum lyrics. And many people didn't take her seriously. Drake was building up a crowd at that time. And plus, he had the mixtapes that he made in 2015 that helped put him even over the top with the hip hop audience. And at the same time, with nothing was the same. Just Hold On, Coming Home was a huge pop and R&B single that propelled him into the spear. And then when Views came out, he could go into that more R&B star style and that hip-hop Jamaican type of flow. It's, it's a smart strategy that he did. And although in the long run, he's the one who won, you cannot see why like it's important to kind of, what what's it called? kind of mature your fan base just you don't have to pander to everyone but you give them little tidbits here and there you don't want to abandon anyone it's important to play the game steady and for young money cash money republic they were busy making Nicki Minaj this big pop star that had all the big features and it was big busy making her household name which is good but in the long run she has a name now but now the hits don't match these guys both became popular at the same time 2009 Nicki Minaj might have been rapping a little bit longer than Drake in New York. But they're relatively both in their 30s. They both blew up at the same time. 
And both, I believe, have... Well, Nicki has... I think Nicki has four studio albums. And Drake's has about six. Drake, also, his work rate is more than Nicki's. He's been going hard with these remixes and flows. And he's been doing his thing the last couple of years. He's been owning that pop and hip-hop lane. Nicki Minaj... Yeah, remember, she didn't have any competition for all those years either. So she should definitely be bigger than Drake at this point by that logic because for the longest time, her only competition was Little Kim, Iggy Azalea, Marie Ma, etc. And two of those people are hasmen out the list. And Iggy Azalea was a basically one year thing. <coughs> Trina wasn't doing anything but making twerking music. Missy Ellie was in remission from different sicknesses. So really, who was the female rapper? Honey Cocaine never popped off as big as she should have been. Um, Chanel West Coast that got signed by Cash Money. She didn't do much. Paris Hilton didn't do anything. Nicki Minaj never had any competition for these last 10 years almost of her career. Cardi B didn't come really until 2015. And she really didn't start blowing up to early 2017. So this means Nicki Minaj had a seven-year reign over all these females. Drake since day one has been competing with Kanye West, Jay-Z, Wiz Khalifa, ASAP Rocky, Meek Mill, J. Cole, Kendrick. It's been way too many male rappers. And then on top of that, since Drake has crossed over to R&B and pop stardom, his famous beats with Chris Brown competing against Trey Songz, the guy who kind of helped him get into the lane, been competing against pop stars like Ed Sheeran for numbers and views. It's a lot of stuff that Drake had to go against. So when you look at it this way, Nicki Minaj should have easily been bigger than Drake. But unfortunately, now the tables have turned. And Drake is probably the biggest, I would say the biggest artist of the 2010s. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think my analysis is right? Has Nicki Minaj had been dethroned by Drake? Or is Nicki Minaj still bigger than Drake in your opinion? Let me know. This is your man off the dome. No, this is your man chef from off the dome. You know what? I can be both. I can be both if I want to. I'm signing out. You have a good night.